A new book explores how one dish comes together from the time the order is placed to the moment it comes to the table. Dig into the dish, the lives and labor behind one plate of food, and you'll never look at a restaurant meal the same way again, trust me. Author Andrew Friedman is the producer and host of the podcast Andrew Talks to Chefs, and he joins us now with more on his newest labor of love. And I have to say, and I told you this in the break, I think it's remarkable because we watch a lot of reality TV and we think we know what's going on behind the scenes, but that is all really produced. You authentically spent time following <laughs> from farm to table, as we say. It's amazing to me how many people are involved in this process. Thank you. Yeah, so the book takes one dish and looks at all the people who come together in that dish. And very often I tell people what the book is and they go, so how many dishes are in the book? And I say, no, it's just one dish. And they're like, how do you fill a book about one dish? But as you say, we, the book is told during a restaurant service. Yes. And as we track this one dish as it's being readied by the various cooks, we have, I always, I describe, I compare it to a Quentin Tarantino movie. You know, you have a present day story, which is the service. And yes. then we have cutaways to profiles of all the different people's backstories. Well, you've got a whole section on just the discussion about the dish. And it's like, okay, if we're going to serve, you know, loin, okay, end of discussion. No, 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 yeah. no. This is really elaborate. Yeah, this was a, the restaurant, which is sadly closed now. They're about to open a new restaurant in the space. It was Wherewithal, the same couple that owned Parachute here in Chicago. And they changed the menu there every week. So in the midst of the menu they're currently serving, Every Thursday after dinner service, like 12.30 in the morning, Friday morning, two of the chefs would sit down with a list of what was available from area farms at that moment, or they knew was coming up, and they would start to concept the menu for the following week. And then they would R&D, research and develop some of those dishes in the midst of the current week. So it was like a constant cycle. And you didn't just spend time at the restaurant. You went down to the farm. I mean, I was so amazed to think that even the deliveries, sometimes the farmer himself comes and, and delivers the product. Oh, I think more often than not. If it's a, if it's a small family farm, yes. um, very often. I mean, there's, I profile a guy named John Templin who has Butternut Sustainable Farms in Michigan. And he, you know, he works the farm all week with a small crew, and then every week he comes and makes deliveries himself. But there's another part of that, which is that's the time they get to have a little face time with the chefs right. to get a feel for the restaurant, to get feedback on what they've been providing, and also to give the chefs information, I'm going to be a little light on carrots next week. Or I have this new crop that's about to come in. I think it's going to be amazing. So the chefs can start thinking about what they might do with those things. I know as I was reading, I was thinking to myself, you know, a lot of times we don't want to think what it was when it's on our plate. But yet it is important when we think about, okay, if they're cows, they need to be grass fed. Who are the people that were raising them along with that farmer? And you delve into all of that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, so I do, go, I do go to a slaughterhouse in the book, and somebody asked me the other day, why'd you go to the slaughterhouse? And I said, you can't get from the field to the restaurant without going through the slaughterhouse. This right. is, it's part of the process. So I want to ask you why you wrote the book, because it's such an interesting story, and you get to know and really like the characters. But in a way, I feel like it's a thank you to the oh, people yeah. that work in the business. Was that your motivation? Oh, 100%. Okay. So I've been covering this industry for a little more than 20 years. Uh, I've come to know a lot of people beyond just the chefs who are in the limelight. And um, I've also, you know, some people either don't think about, don't appreciate, um, don't treat them nicely, the people that work in restaurants. Um, and they don't realize how hard these jobs are and that these people have, you know, backstories and challenges and current lives that are just as interesting and, and complex as ours. And I just think it's a customer failing that a lot of people don't think about that. So I wanted them to really get a sense of who these people are who make it possible for us to enjoy restaurants. Well, I tell you, I will never be late again for a reservation. <laughs> Not that I usually like to. I mean, I certainly like to be prompt. But the ripple effect of that, I don't think I even ever understood. And you described that so beautifully. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the whole, the whole operation of a restaurant is a very intricate um, uh, it's very intricate. There are a lot of moving pieces. There are a lot of intersecting pieces. And if one thing, I, I talk in the book about dishwashers. And I, you know, I profile the dishwasher yes. in the book. Nobody thinks about this. If the dish department goes down, the dishwashing department, you don't have plates, you don't have bowls, you don't have cups, you can't serve food. 
And that is one of the most important roles in any restaurant. And you, people, I don't even think, think about the, the human doing that job. Right. You also talk about the owner chefs and the chef de cuisine on down to the young, hopeful chefs. And boy, that is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. Uh, it used to be even worse because, you know, you could, people could pay you for just working a shift, but you might be working four or five, six hours beyond the shift. Uh, but it's still, it's very hard work. It's very stressful. Uh, I think people discover pretty quickly whether or not they're meant for this life. And um, the team in this restaurant was, you know, they were all doing a great job. Uh, but yeah, there are people who, as I like to say, from like the officer and gentleman, there are people who ring the bell yes. and, <laughs> and get out like before they're even done training. That, sure. that does happen. Well, you'll have to read the book to find out why a lot of the chefs here didn't like Tuesdays. Um, <laughs> it was a great education, I think, as well as a wonderful story. So thank you for sharing and thank you for being here today to talk about it. The Dish, the lives and labor behind one plate of food is out tomorrow. You can check out AndrewTalksToChefs.com for more information. And we'll also have a link on our website at WGNTV.com slash midday. We'll be right back.